Hey everybody, Mark Dawes here and welcome to my kitchen here in my house on Hailing Island where I live. Uh, I've just popped in here to make a cup of coffee actually and I'm just sort of making a cup of coffee because I'm having a break. <laughs> from working on my laptop and the reason I'm working on my laptop in case you don't know is for the last 10 days or so I've been suffering with a, an injury it's to my Achilles tendon which has been hugely painful it's still not fixed and just the ability actually to walk from my living room to the kitchen to make a cup of coffee is absolutely fantastic you know because I've not had that ability for about 10 days and, and it's been quite deliberating and particularly for someone like me who likes to move around an awful lot and do stuff but you know it it, it sort of makes me realize you know that how much we all take for granted in terms of our ability just to walk amongst all the other things we can do and the reason for the video i mean i was just put the kettle on and i was thinking about stuff and i just come across a post on, on one of the social media platforms and someone has put a post up there about the fact that you know just before christmas they've been made redundant and they're hugely qualified and they're hugely skilled and they love their job and they enjoy their work and now bang christmas coming up they've been told their, their services by their employer are no longer required. And this is, by the way, not an isolated case. You know, there's lots of people in the same boat, and I appreciate that. But that sort of, sort of pushed me to do this video, really, because I believe firmly and strongly that every one of you out there, every one of you, should have your own business. Even if it's a part-time business, even if it's a little thing you do, you know, on the side, you know, not your mainstream business. And that business should be about something you love, something you love doing, something you're passionate about. And here's the reason why. Gone are the days now where we can rely on people or employers to give us jobs for life. You know, as this person has found out, they've gone to work, bang, no longer needed. But if you've got a safety net, if you've got a lifeboat, if you like, that you can build part-time so that when the time is ready, should you need it, you can jump into that and you know, run your own ship if you like, you know, build, you run your own business, be, be in control of your own destiny. That's what you should be doing. And that's, that's what I, you know, I, I would urge every person to do. Now there are numerous benefits in doing this. I mean, tax benefits are one, you know, if you start your own business, then everything you do in that business is tax deductible. And if you are employed right now and you are paying your PAYE and your tax through your, through your um, salary, then if you make a loss in your first year, and by the way, I can't give accounting advice, I, you know, I'm not an accountant, so I'm, I'm gonna make that disclosure right now, but go and check this with an accountant. If you make a loss in your first year in business, building your part-time business, you can carry that back and forwards and you know, talk to an accountant about that or go on the government's website where you can find out more about how you claim that money back. So technically, you can start up a business, make a loss and get a tax rebate. That, that's what I'm saying, okay? But here's the thing. You know, it's it's there, it's an insurance policy, it's a pension fund. And if you're doing it because you love it, then it's great as well. Now, I did that, you know, years ago, well, I, you know, I left the, the services, I did various things, and I ended up being a prison officer. And it was a good job, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, sort of, you know, I enjoyed part of it. But I knew I couldn't be there for life. I, I knew it wasn't gonna be my thing. So my passion was martial arts and self-defense, and I started teaching that part-time. And then I turned it into a business. And the reason I turned it into a business was this, and I want you to pay specific attention, all of you that are doing this out there, pay specific attention to this. I was paying for my hobby. I was paying for the privilege to teach others. And let me explain what I mean by that. As a martial arts instructor, we would hire a hall two or three times a week, and we would run classes and people would turn up and we would take a mat fee off them of £2.50 or £3.50, I can't remember what it was now. And sometimes that was just about enough to cover the cost of hiring the hall. So we never made any profit. And then when the holiday periods were there, less people would turn up because they're away on holiday, they want to be with their families, do whatever. So we wouldn't make enough money to cover the hall fee, so I would have to pay the hall fee. So I was out of pocket. I was paying for the privilege to do my hobby, which was teaching other people. Now, because I was doing it as a sport, as a hobby, I got no tax benefit from that. The minute I turned that into a business and I started to make a loss, I could offset that loss against my, my salary, against the tax I paid from my salary, and I would get a tax rebate. So I wasn't out of pocket. So question for you. Would it be beneficial to you if 
doing your hobby, martial arts, self-defense, sport, whatever, whatever it is you do. If you could get a tax rebate from a tax man for the money you don't make from doing your hobby. And the answer to that is gotta be yes. That's why you should look at setting up a business. And a business has gotta be about something you love. Because if you don't love what you do, you won't stay the course. And let me tell you why. People who just wanna go out there and make money, there's nothing wrong with that by the way, you know, if they wanna go out there and make money, they have gotta get up every morning and find a reason to make money. And that's a hard thing to do because it doesn't drive you at a core level. It doesn't drive you where your passion lies. It doesn't drive you with your values. It may not be consistent with what you actually believe, but you need to make money to pay the bills. If your business is about something you love, something you desire, something that you get fired up about, then getting up and doing that business isn't hardship. You're doing what you love. And if you just use a little bit of potential and turn what you love, you monetize it in other words, you turn it into a business, it doesn't change what you do, it just changes how you go about doing what you do, then it, the difference is, is that as opposed to paying out of your own pocket and paying tax to the tax man, you can actually get a tax rebate from the tax man, or you can offset your expenses from running your hobby, if you turn into a business, against your profit. So you start to make money. Now, I, I know what a lot of you say, you'll say, well, I'm not in it for the money. Great, okay. But we live in a society where we rely on money. Now, what if you're not in it for the money? So you've got a job, great, you've got a job. So you're doing your hobby because you love it and you're not in it for the money. But what if the job lets you down? What if one day they turn around and say, hey, do you know what? Thanks ever so much, Mark. Thanks for your 10, 15, 20, 30 years, but we don't need you anymore. How are you gonna actually carry on with your hobby if you don't have the money from your job to fund your hobby? So all I'm suggesting to you, all I'm suggesting to you is you make your hobby self-sufficient. You make it capable of standing on its own two feet financially. Now, the reason I'm passionate about this is when I joined the Royal Navy as a young man when I was 16, I loved it. I loved the life. You know, I wasn't in there for the money. And I think all of us that do what we do are not necessarily in there for the money. I mean, I had an audit this morning and the woman could not believe the prices we charge for what we do with all the accommodation of food thrown in. She said, but you're cheaper than everyone else. Said, yeah, we're not necessarily in it for the money, although we are running it as a business. So hopefully you're getting that, that's, that twist now. But going back to my Navy days, I signed up for life. I was in there for life. I became a commissioned officer after 10 years in the ranks. And then I left, and I left because, for want of a better story, let's say we agreed to disagree uh, on a certain subject matter, and I felt that they'd broken their word, so I decided it was time for me to go. Now, I didn't get any help when I left, and they weren't that compassionate about helping me through the process of transition. So one minute, I'm in a career where I'm gonna be for all of my life, that's what I planned for. The next minute, I'm out, and I had to fend for myself. And I learned a very stark lesson. And that is, is if you don't do this, no one else may be willing to do it for you. They might help you out here and there, but they won't do it for you. If you build your own business in your passion, in what you love, in what you desire, then you've got that lifeboat there. You've got that safety net. So let's say you're in a £20,000 a year job, but you've got a, a little part-time business that's earning you £5,000 a year or £10,000 a year, and you build that business. You can very quickly build that business up to replace the income that you make in your salary. And I'll give you an example. In, what, in my previous job as a prison officer, uh, I was earning, I think, roughly about 18, 20, I can't remember, 18, 20,000 pound a year. But in my days off, in my, in, in my weekends and in my holidays, I was running courses. And within a very short period of time, probably less than a year, I can't remember off the top of my head, I was earning more money part-time than I was earning full-time in my business. So when it became time to make that decision of where I wanted to live, you know, where I wanted to bring my children up, when I wanted to work, because remember, you know, you work as a prison officer or a police officer or in any other company, they dictate the hours you work. And I wanted the freedom to be able to, to work where I wanted to work and when I wanted to work. So I could just replace my salary. And that's exactly what I did. When my salary, well, I was earning part-time, was as much or more than what I was making full-time, I resigned and I left. Now, a lot of people said to me, mate, you're mad. It's security. 
you know, your pension, you're this, you're that, you know, why are you leaving? Because we have it drilled in our heads from a very early age that having a PAY job is secure. It isn't. It's not secure. As some poor person has found out already, it's not secure at all. It's a fallacy, it's a myth. It's absolute smoke and mirrors. The only secure job you're ever gonna have is when you work for yourself, okay? It's a fact, because you know, unless you just choose to make yourself unemployed, you've got as much work as you want to do. Now, I know some of you are saying, it isn't that easy. No, it isn't, it isn't that easy. But you're probably working hard for someone else right now, so why don't you work harder for yourself? And I'll tell you something as well. You will work harder for yourself than you will ever work for anyone else. And that's why employed roles, in the majority of cases, don't work for people, because they don't enjoy what they're doing, so they don't put the time and effort in, they don't, they don't put their heart and soul into it, they do what they need to do, and that's why they hate their freaking jobs. You do what you do for you, you can do it all day long. I get up five, six o'clock in the morning. I get up, I come down, I do my stuff. If I didn't love what I do, and, and by the way, I get days when I don't want to do it, all right? but if I didn't love what I do, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be able to do it. I wouldn't be able to put the hours in. I wouldn't be able to put the time in. I wouldn't be able to put the passion into it. So the making money aspect of it would die. And that's the key. If you're going to set something up part-time, if you're going to build a business, build it in an area that you are passionate about because passion is transient. Passion will continue. Your interest in it will continue. Now, I know on the internet, on Facebook and YouTube and Google, there's lots of people out there saying, oh, you know, do this and earn £100,000 and do this. And, and listen, I've done them all. Okay, I, in, in my frustration to get away from paid employment, I tried everything. And yeah, I made money. I, I made a lot of money. I made it short time. Could I replicate the process and make it continuous? No. Why? Because I wasn't interested in what I was doing. I do what I do today because I love what I do. I do it for the same reasons I started it nearly 30 years ago, because I wanted to make a difference, because I was passionate about it. I wanted to know more about it. And because you have that passion and that drive and that interest, you are continually learning. And that's the beauty of doing something that you love. You will continually learn and you will enhance what you do. It's the best CPD program on the planet. So if you've made any sense out of my rant so far, and I only came in here to make a bloody cup of coffee, the point of this video blog is to say to you, Go and find out what it is you want to do and do it. You know, don't, I was looking for my mobile phone. You know, we have more technology at our disposal now than your parents and your grandparents had. You know, you've got a mobile phone that you can do social media on, you can talk to people on, you can do everything on. Use it the right way. You know, discipline yourself in how to use it the right way. I mean, don't just put pictures up of food or, you know, someone's toes or whatever the fucking stupid stuff they put up there. Use it as a business tool. You, know, you can communicate with people around the world. Yes, you've got to learn stuff. And I'll tell you what, the last 10 days, sat there, not being able to do anything, I learned loads of stuff. I bought a new camera, I learned how to use it, I brought a new microphone, I learned how to use it, I've learned how to improve my editing soft, my editing skills by using editing software, and I've done it all from my armchair, watching bloody YouTube videos and reading books. I'm 58 years old nearly, I'm 58 on my next birthday. I'm a 58 year old man, if I can do this, if you are younger than me, and it doesn't matter if you're older than me, you can still do this too, but certainly if you're younger than me, of course you can do it, you're probably doing it now. Here's my Christmas present to you. Start your own business. Start your own part-time business and build that lifeboat. And if you're gonna come and train with us, we'll help you. I mean, that's part of our passion. That's part of our drive is to help other people become successful. That's what we do. Anyway, I'm gonna finish off my coffee. It's probably gone cold. I just wanted to leave you with that thought. It was purely spur of the moment, off the cuff shoulder thought, having read someone's post on a social media uh, blog just now or you know, on a social media platform. Just came up here, made a coffee, did a video. What's stopping you from doing the same? Thanks for listening. Speak to you soon.